Yeah, maybe we can we could uh, kind of start at the uh, where we are now and work backwards in some ways. But uh, as I was mentioning earlier, um, one of the ways to characterize what we do and have always done, even though the sort of some of the details have changed, sort of a tagline way of of characterizing our business that you might say to a customer would be, "Hey, you've made the right choice technically to go with Linux. There's no question about that." We see, we see, we obviously see that that decision has been in the market uh, many, many times. Now, what you need to do is complement that great technical decision with the right business decision. In other words, how are we going to incorporate Linux into our business? And of course, there we think the right way to do that so it's, it's our business. The right way to do that is by using a partner such as Montevist to be the core Linux supplier. So, congratulations on a great technical decision using Linux take it to the next step, make the right business decision, and, and use Monta Vista. And, and that's been the foundation of what we've done all along. Now what's, what's happened is the details of what you need to do to do that have changed. So if we wind back 10 years to when we started, 10 years ago, a little bit over now, when we started the company, uh, it's kind of fun to reminisce in the sense of uh, most folks thought we were crazy, which is an interesting spot to be in. But certainly Wind River and others were uh, kind of, you know, very actively dismissing the idea that you could use something such as Linux in an embedded system. And of course, we we knew better, uh, and we we proved that very very quickly. Uh, but at the time, it it was such an outlier uh, that it was yet another OS that was possible to use in embedded systems, along with the 52 bazillion other RTOSs and so on that uh, people use. In other words, it, it, when we started, it was a highly fragmented, and it had always been a highly fragmented OS space for embedded systems. And what we were doing is bringing Linux in as yet another another alternative. Now, we thought it was the right long-term alternative, and obviously we've been proven right, but just remember that 10 years ago it was in the sea of other um, RTOSs. And in that sense, the only thing Monta Vista could do was to do for Linux what we had, what others were doing for proprietary RTOSs, which is to to build one. In other words, uh, start with the basic sources, and at that point, typically kernel.org. If there were ports to other processors, they were often way out of date and uh, quite buggy. And, but nevertheless, we were the initial starting point. We had to produce the core distributions, do the core hardware support, and put together a distribution that could be used in embedded systems. And in some sense, that model, although starting with open source and, and Linux technology, the internal model, the idea of under, you know, specifying what, what the features would be, selecting the rev of Linux that you were going to use, trying to pick the best one at the time, which was a challenge early on. But many other aspects of the business were precisely the same uh, as the, what you did in the RTOS world. I mean, and you defined the universe, and it was a universe that was in parallel with the semiconductor makers. They would supply the silicon. The RTOS makers, and in, now including you know, Monta Vista with Linux, would specify on their own and at their own judgment which chips they were going to support, what the feature load would be like, and so on. And, and that's a very successful model uh, given the circumstances at the time and given the relative lack of participation by the semiconductor makers, for example. And that worked like a charm. And in fact, that's what pioneered and powered the first, what, five or six years of Monta Vista growth. Uh, we led the charge. You know, and that sort of, in a sense, proprietary model, but using Linux as the core technology, served us extremely well. But long around uh, 2006, 2007, somewhere in there, uh, a funny thing happened, and that is that Linux won. We didn't think it was a funny thing. We thought, you know, we were pouring gas on that fire. But it became very clear through market um, uh, adaptation uh, uh, studies and so on, in other words, what, what OS are people using in their embedded systems, that long around two, 2005, 2006 or so, Linux was in the 30 to 40 percent range. Now it's well over 50 percent of new design starts on 32 or 64 bit embedded processors are using Linux. The first time ever there's been a clear winner and a clear standard in the embedded systems OS market. And it started to happen, you know, on the order for three or four years ago. 
That, in turn, had a tremendous sort of galvanizing effect on the market for sure, but also on the behavior of our semiconductor friends. Whereas before, it was impossible for them to figure out what OS to, to put onto their, to their uh, silicon. Uh, they would maybe fund uh, VxWorks, which is, even though a small percentage, was still the most uh, likely RTOS, but a very small percentage of the overall market. But now, uh, it was very clear that if they were going to spend any money at all, they would spend it on Linux. And rightfully so. And what they needed to do, and what they thought they needed to do, was to make sure that the Linux implementation on their chip made full, full use of the hardware acceleration and or features that their particular chip might have. It's intrinsically in their business to make sure that uh, Linux is, you know, nicely supported on the chip, and sort of features, you know, all the hardware capabilities that they have. So what happened then is that the core starting point for a company, a uh, commercialized Linux uh, company such as Monta Vista, the, where to start from changed dramatically from 10 years ago where you had to start kind of back at the atomic level, you know, because there was we had to do the core bring up and so on. The starting point has dramatically shifted over the last three or four years and has really culminated in the last couple of years to where you don't want to be uh, and cannot be going back to elemental bits uh, for Linux. Um, you can't independently decide what parts of the hardware uh, you're going to support. You can't independently decide what rev of Linux you're going to use without extraordinarily difficult rework uh, and, and a uh, tremendous investment in time and money. In other words, you can't rationally be out of sync with the people that are doing the core development of the software, uh, and that's the semiconductor makers. That's a huge shift in the kind of the dynamics of this market. It says that any independent third-party Linux provider has to adapt their model to be consistent with and leverage the fundamental work that the semiconductor guys uh, make and that you can't have, or I think it's very unproductive to have, and it doesn't serve the customer as well, to have this sort of proprietary RTOS model of your own world, your own private definition, out of sync uh, with the primary silicon product producers. So that dynamic, which was fueled by us in the sense of helping push Linux along to being the, the uh, dominating uh, OS, has dramatically changed the dynamics of uh, what a company such as Monta Vista does in its kind of uh, internals uh, and, and how we manage uh, the uh, core development of our distribution. And all it says is that with the same, same efforts that we originally had to apply to kind of doing elemental work, we can take that same amount of engineering resource and leverage on top of the fine work that our semiconductor friends have done to bring Linux up on their silicon. And it says, therefore, that the the additional features and capabilities, additional testing, whatever th that we think is uh, useful to enhance our distribution to make it quicker for our customers to, to use uh, Linux, that's where we apply those resources. So it's a, just a shift in focus. But this, the ultimate end is still to have our customers develop their devices quicker, uh, get to market faster, lower cost, higher quality, the usual things that we've always been associated with.